All right. Well, welcome to the 2020 uh, school year it's character playbook live brought to you by the United Way of Broward County and your Miami Dolphins. My name is Darian Johnson. I'm a senior account manager uh, for EverFi who builds the programs like character playbook amongst others. And we are so happy to bring this special event to you. Uh, so without further ado, I want to bring out our moderator and host, a very well-known Dolphins alumni player and current staff member, Twan Russell. Hey, how's everybody doing? Man, it's just good to be around people. I've been stuck in my house for months, and um, I'm excited about being here today because I get to see somebody else outside of myself. Well, uh, welcome to this special Character Playbook Live event. My name is Twan Russell, and I am a Miami Dolphins alumni, and I currently am the Miami Dolphins Community Ambassador. Um, during this social distancing time, it is so amazing and great uh, to be connected to some of our South Florida schools. Just so just for the record, we have high schools and middle schools in the house today. We have Miami Killian, we have Miami Killian Senior High School, we have Andover Middle, we have Cor Cor Gable Senior High School. I know I can hear you guys yelling in the background. South Miami Middle School, uh, South Ridge Senior High School, uh, Diller High School right down the street from where I grew up when I was a kid. Uh, Deerfield Beach Middle School. We have Georgia Jones um, Ayers Middle School. Cole Springs Middle School in the house. Sheridan Tech uh, Technical College. And last but not least, where I currently live, I live in Plantation. So we got South Plantation High School in the house. I'm so excited to have you with us. And I want to introduce some really cool people. And the first person I'd like to introduce, uh, she's a beautiful person inside and out. She's from <clears throat> United Way um, of Broward County. Please uh, welcome uh, Emilia Valer Moncheri. It looks like- Good morning. Good morning, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, my name is Amelia Valer Moncheri. I'm the Director of Community Impact Initiatives at United Way of Broward County. I'm so glad to have you all here. We're looking at 94 and up participants. That just shows a true testament of your character, boys and girls. Thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us here. And we're gonna have a fun and great time. United Way of Broward County thanks you for everything you do and for building your character um, is going to contribute to a better world. And we are so proud of you all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Amelia. Mon I I'm trying to roll that for her. You know, she's, she's helping me with that, you know, with rolling my tongue a little bit. Uh, the next guest, who is a dear friend of mine, and honestly, he's probably one of the greatest individuals I know. Um, He's a, I, I, you know, when he's, he's a big dude, he's probably six, six, you know, a little under 300 pounds, but I tell people he's a teddy bear, but he is a bear. So he's a, he's a big guy, loving guy. He loves the kids. Um, we've been working together for almost 10 years and he's, he's a, a former Miami Dolphin um, NFL player. He played in the league for 10 years. Everybody put your hands together for, in his mind, one of the greatest tight ends ever to play, <laughs> Troy Drayton. <laughs> How's everybody doing? That's <laughs> why we actually been working together for over 10 years. If you if you count the time that uh, when I when I first retired and started doing some stuff for you. So we've, we've been working together for a long time, but right. appreciate the introduction. Hello, students and teachers. My name again is Troy Drayton. I am the manager of youth football and camps for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I played position of tight end for your Miami Dolphins. It's great to see you here uh, and talk to you today through the, the character playbook program that teaches students about conflict resolution, building healthy relationships, social media influences, and more. Now I think it's a good time to, for Twan to ask us some questions. Does that sound good to everybody? Hey, that's not a bad idea, Troy. You know, I love to ask questions, but before we do that, I need some help. I mean, I'm told that we have 100 people, 100 young people on the line, adults and kids. 
so you can help me keep my job. But yes, I said keep my job. We do have a pandemic, so you know it's hard to find jobs around here. But we we just started an um, Instagram account, um, and I need you to help me grow the Instagram account. So right now we have 617 people. If you take out your phones, everybody take out your phones right now. You know I know everybody has an Instagram account. We did a study the other day, and it said that high school and middle school students, the number one social media platform they like is Instagram. So everybody take your, take your phones out, go to Instagram right now, and you can help me keep my job. I need a job. I got a daughter in college. She's 23 years old and she <laughs> costs money. She's getting a master's degree. So I need some help. I got a, I got a 17 year, uh, 18 year old now. He's going to college next year. He's going to Vanderbilt. And you know that, that a 10 year old, that's the one she's going to be costing me money for another 10 years. So, all right, take your phones out, go to junior dolphins at junior dolphins. Um, it's a it's a high school and middle school account. It's all about growing the game of football, football cheerleading. Uh, it has workouts on there, and just like us, follow us. We need the help. Please follow us on that. So we're gonna take about 15 seconds. Everybody follow. I want to watch and see it grow. I want to see it start. Oh man, we just jumped up 10 spots. Y'all helping me? You know what I'm saying? I love it. You know, um, everybody keep liking it. Keep on growing. Let's see. Let's see. It's, Man, it just jumped up. Man, we had we had 629 now. Can we get it to 700 um, over the course of this process? So keep liking us. Now it's we have workout videos. Uh, we we have a lot of things um, that talking about high school football and youth football. So it's a cool site to follow. And right now we're at 636. So I'm expecting by the end of this that we're going to be at 700. So keep on um, following us throughout this. So let's jump into the questions. I love asking questions and I love talking to young people um, and, and, and kind of jumping into your lives and understanding what you guys are doing. So, all right, Troy and Miss Amelia, let's, let's jump into this. So what does character mean to you, Amelia? And what do you think having good character means? Character to me is the way that you present yourself to the world. Mm -hmm. but not just in a fake way, but in a true, honest, authentic way of what you feel on the inside, your heart, your mind, the connection between your mind, body, and soul, and how you present that to the world. Mm -hmm. And what was the second part of that question, Swan? Um, and, and what do you think good character means? So what does good, um, what does good character mean to you, and what, does it, what do you think it, um, good character means? Yeah, good character. I'm going to go back to authenticity and genuineness and good character means having a good heart, a heart of gold maybe, and, and projecting that to the people in your life, your family, your friends, your teachers, your guidance counselors, whoever you come across, even strangers, strangers on the street. But being able to present that kindness and light to the world is what good character means to me. No, that's, a, that's an awesome answer. Now I know Troy is a person that I think has high character um, and he has to make hard decisions in tough places. So Troy, what, what does character mean to you and, and what do you think um, having good character means? Um, I think good character to me means that you, you choose to do the right things at all times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, like Amelia said, it, it's about being genuine. It's about being, auth auth you know, being authentic. But more, more importantly, it's about you having conviction about who you are. Um, you know, to me, you know, that, that, that's, what it, that's what it truly means. And I think um, when I think about it, you know, when you think about characteristics of, of, of that, you're talking about loyalty, you're talking about being honest, you're talking about being courageous, you're talking about integrity, but more importantly, having fortitude just not giving up, being able to work through everything that you're going through. So I think all of those things um, encompass uh, having more, a great moral character. You know, it's, those are great answers. You know, character is, um, the, it, character is to me, how moral are you? It's, you know, it's those moral qualities, those moral uh, distinctive things that, that describe you. And, and I 100% agree with both of you. Um, character is that one thing that you have to build on every day. And it's something, it's a, you know, it's, I believe it's a learned trait because there are things in my life as a young person, 
you know, I thought was okay to do, but as I grew in knowledge and I, as I got better understanding of who I wanted to be and how I wanted to represent uh, myself in the world, I realized there were some things that, you know what, what wasn't appropriate for me. So, you know, I had to move my moral needle to a, in a different direction. And morality is something that you learn and you're constantly growing in that. And I, and I think it's something that you have to practice. It's something that you have to work at. And, um, and I think those are great answers. And I, I really appreciate it, both of you. And as, as young people, as you're looking at, you know, your character, it's that one thing that you, that you, you take pride in when nobody else knows if you're taking pride in it or not. Because usually, you know, you can, you can do certain things and no one will really know, but your character is doing the right things when nobody knows you're really doing the right things. And, <laughs> and for me, that's, that's, a, that's a character. Thank you very much, um, Troy and Amelia. Question number two, and we're going to start off with Troy here. If, if you could, and, and I'm assuming this person would be a lot smaller, I'm guessing. But if you could... What advice would you give your middle school self? How tall do you think your middle school self was? About five ten. Um, my middle school self was about five. Yeah, about that. About five nine. I was about about that. Yeah. You're six four now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, what what advice would I give my middle school self? I would say, stop procrastinating. Mm. I would tell my middle school self. Stop procrastinating. I know one, one of the problems that I had when I was in middle school was I always waited to the last minute to do things. Um, and, and sometimes I always felt like that brought out the best in me, but it's not always a good thing. So uh, if I would have had to tell myself anything, it would be stop procrastinating and get to work. Hmm. I love it. Stop procrastinating. Yeah, I, I could use that one, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Mansuri. <clears throat> yes, I would tell my middle school self, stick with it and don't give up. Ooh. So I remember joining various clubs and organizations after school things, track, swim team, science club. But from what I remember, they were all very short term. Like I tried it out, didn't stick with it, moved on to the next thing, moved on to the next thing. So I would definitely tell myself, don't give up. Find what you're interested in, stick with it, and see it through till the end. Because, you know, who knows? I could have carried it over into high school and really made something out of it. Um, so instead of dibble and dabbling in all these things and never really finishing them out to completion, I would have told my middle school self, stick with it and stay with it till the end. Man, those are, those are, that's great advice. I can use that advice right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I would give myself two recommendations. I don't know if I can narrow it down to one. I think the first one would be, um, you know, appreciate the relationships there. As you get older, those elementary, middle school, and high school relations start meaning more to you. Um, just recently, I started a, a Zoom monthly call with the guys that I grew up with when I was in middle school. And we all went to different high schools and we lost touch. And I wish I would have kept and developed those relationships over the time. And so as, as I'm an older gentleman now, that how much more valuable and special could we have, you know, been by sharing our lives together because they knew me when I was a little boy and now we're trying to catch up 20 years. So I want, the number one thing is um, spend more time in, in keeping and valuing those relationships. And I think the second thing would be um, is dealing with fear better and, yeah, I, I was always so afraid of, you know, not being acclimated into high school or being being like everybody else or trying something new. I wish I would start trying things new earlier because now, like, I enjoy trying things new. And I think the more new things that you can try in life, the better your life is going to be. So, um, you know, to your point, uh, Emily, you talked about, you know, science club and all these different clubs. I wish I would have tried some of that stuff. I mean, some of it I was fearful of, is someone going to say something negative to me or will I not be good enough? Can I not make it? I, to me, I think I would have just, you know, dealt with fear better and try new more things. Hey, um, Tuan, it's Darian here. We have a bonus question. Yeah. Um, that question is, what's the biggest life lesson you have learned? 
Oh, that's a big one. My mine's easy. While you two are thinking, I got mine. Right? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Twan. No, go ahead, Twan. You go. So, go ahead. Um, so mine is. I've learned a long time ago that <clears throat> I will fail myself if I'm doing something for me. I won't do it as hard. I won't do it to the best of my ability. But if I'm doing it to serve someone else or to help someone else, or if I'm like, when I'm, when I'm working, for instance, I work, I think to a certain level because I'm doing it to make sure my family has what they need. You know, when I was playing football in the national football league, you know, every time I stepped on a football field from a faith standpoint, I wanted to be, I wanted my football play to be like worship. Um, when I, when I, you know, met people, I wanted to help them transform their lives. So I, I realized for me, I work better and harder when I'm doing it for somebody else. Um, anyway, Amelia, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just changed your name. <laughs> no problem. Um, the biggest life lesson. So I think throughout the course of my years, there are a lot of life lessons that come across different seasons and phases in your life. You'll have these big life lessons that hit you and you can't really pick one over the other because they all contribute to making you a better person and growth and wisdom. But what first came into my mind is don't let anyone steal your joy. Yeah. Um, things happen, you know, things yeah. happen in life. People hurt you. Uh, <laughs> humans are, are, are full of error and they're not perfect. So people will unintentionally hurt you and some people will intentionally hurt you. Um, things will happen that will disappoint you. Failures will happen. You will disappoint yourself. Um, life happens. Honestly, life is rough and it happens. And it's not promised to anyone for it to be perfect and to, for it to be rainbows and butterflies. But through it all, through all the obstacles, through all the fire, the biggest life lesson is don't let anyone take away your joy. Don't let anyone steal your joy from you. And don't let anyone ever you know, guide you off that path of happiness. That was good. That was awesome. I'm right. I'm making notes, by the way. Troy? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I think mine is, is, is twofold. Uh, just to just to come a little bit off of what you said, um, I would say you have to conquer your fears. I mean, there's a lot of things out there that that we look at and we say we're afraid to try, or we're afraid to do, but you have to, you have to, you have to take a step towards that fear, because again, it's it's about you overcoming it, and with you overcoming it, makes you a stronger person. Like we go through trials and tribulations in life because it makes us stronger, and you know a lot of time fear stops us because you know, you're, the fear of failure. Well, there's lessons to be learned in that failure sometimes. And we have to be able to take those lessons and apply it to the rest of our lives. And I think the, the thing that really speaks to me is never giving up. Like I walked on at Penn State and that was a huge task. And walking on, I don't know if any of you guys out there knows what that means. It means that I went to school and I didn't receive a scholarship. Um, but I had an invitation to walk onto the football team. Um, and that year we had the number one recruiting class in the nation. And, um, but I, I attacked it like I attacked every, I attack everything else in my life. I go at it full stick. I give it a hundred percent and, and um, I, I, I let the outcome be what it, what it's going to be. But at the end of the day, I ended up getting a great education. Um, I had to switch positions in the middle of my junior year. But uh, I ended up getting drafted in the second round, a 39th pick in, in the NFL draft. And um, that's, that's kind of been my motto is no matter how tall the pro or no, no matter what the problem is, you go full steam ahead at it and you never give up. You keep working at it. You keep working at it. You keep working at it. And you outwork the problem and you outwork the situation. And, and, and that and overcoming all of those things, you'll become a stronger and better person for it. Man, that was good. I mean, we had three good uh, life lessons there. We had, uh, don't let anyone steal your joy, never give up, and then uh, believe in something bigger than you. I mean, I think those three things, if you can put that in your back pocket, you can accomplish a lot. <laughs> uh, a third question, and we're gonna, um, uh, Amelia, we're gonna start with you. Uh, when you get mad, 
and I'm sure sometimes you get frustrated. Uh, what do you do to calm yourself down? Sometimes I just take a nap. <laughs> just, just take an honestly, just take a nap. And I'm not a big napper. I don't nap a lot. Um, but sometimes I realize I, I need that reset button, you mm. know, and putting your mind at rest because my mind does, when I get angry, my mind gets going, you know, and you think of all the things you should have said, you know, or you should have done, or, oh, you know, you start replaying the situation and you just start getting even more upset, you know? So I need to just stop my brain and uh, do a reset button. I call it a reboot. I need a reboot. Um, take a nap, wake up. You are better able, I am better able to process the emotions and the thoughts after I've given my mind some rest. And, th and that's what I do in moments of anger. I'm all about that nap. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Listen, I'm, I'm heading to three kids right now. A nap is a high commodity and doesn't come often. So. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. What about you, Troy? Um, Amelia, you stole mine. So uh, I do nap a lot when I, when I get upset. But I, I think what I do uh, when I get upset is I call – a positive friend. So we got a lot of friends in our life, right? And you know, you have those positive friends who, who will actually sit there and they will listen to the problem. They're, half the, the, half the battle with problems is that you need somebody, you need to get it off your chest and you need to get it out to somebody who, who will listen. Um, so I think what I do, and I, and I do this with Twan all the time. If, if I have a- Get mad I, at me? No, no, but if I do have an issue, I, sometimes I, I, I call him and, and, and we talk through it because, you know, I don't have all the answers and, um, and I look at him and he's, he's a guy that has, has mentored me in a lot of different ways and he still mentors me uh, in life. So I, I call a, a positive friend like Tuan to, to help get me through that situation. But the biggest thing that I do is I honestly take a nap, like you said, Amelia. For me, what that does is it's, 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 a, it's a temperature gauge. So if I wake up and I'm still angry, I know that I'm on to something, so I got to I, I figure out that solution. And if I wake up and I'm, and, and I don't, and I'm not mad anymore, then that means that I overreacted and um, that I probably got emotional and, and um, that there was nothing to it to begin with. So a nap is always a perfect gauge for me uh, when, it, when it comes to having problems or any, any of those type of things. I can't say I take naps very often, but I do enjoy them <clears throat> the few times, <clears throat> excuse me, the few times I do get to take one. Um, but I, I think what I do kind of fits into what um, uh, you and Amelia have described, Troy. Uh, I just take time. You know, like if I if I if I'm in a hard situation, if I'm in a, uh, a tense situation, I just take some time where I can, you know, relax, think about the conversation. Because in the moment, I always say when you respond in the moment, you hurt. And you know, if I can, re if I can take myself away from the moment just for a little bit, and whether reflect, calm down, maybe sometimes I just go watch television or read a book, or you know, I go do something else. And I just calm myself down. So now I can deal with the root problem because sometimes when you're dealing with the emotion, sometimes that emotion causes pain. And to deal with a situation or deal with conflict, you know, you just need to, you know, remove yourself from the situation. And 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 while I'm in that situation, I feel, I, I start asking myself, how did I get here? What did I do to cause it? Uh, what mistakes did I make? Did I did I make it? less about the issue and more about the person because it's never about the person it's about the issue you know and and the focus is on the issue and i this actually um is a great transition into our next question uh, what is what is your go-to method to resolve conflict mm -hmm. and you know i think conflict is that one thing that we all um have to deal with and let's start with um miss valere um uh, so to reduce conflict, something that I do is I really put myself in the other person's shoes. Mm. Um, and I try to imagine the situation um, from where they're coming from. Um, and it's, it's a term called empathy. 
you know, where you're, you don't, you really try to place yourself in that person's position, try to think that the way that person is thinking, try to consider their experience, their background, their perspective, you know, their, their cultural beliefs, and try to see, okay, where is this person coming from and what exactly is causing this conflict? Is it miscommunication? Is it that we have different viewpoints on life or whatever the issue is at hand? But that's something that I try to do first and foremost and say, okay, take a step back. Let me get out of my mind and into that person's mind and try to imagine what they're feeling, what they're thinking, and then I can deal with the situation appropriately. Hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's good words. You know, one of the things I always do with conflict I figure out who are the parties involved mm. and I say, let's bring them together because it's one thing I've learned that when you look at people face to face, eye to eye, and you're dealing with conflict and you're trying to do it in a healthy way. And you get, and if there's, you know, five people involved, you bring all five people, you're going to figure out where the disconnect is. And I found that to be a very healthy way. And then also, also what it does, it makes it more transparent. So then I can, figure out, okay, where did my emotion get involved? And then where there's the facts of the issue. And then I'm able to usually solve the problem. Sometimes I realize it's me, you know, and sometimes I have to apologize and I have to make it right. And I have to reboot that relationship. Um, but I, I try to bring everybody together and, and try to work it out. What about you, Troy? Well, being that I deal with football camps and, and parents and, and, and kids, um, like you said, what I do is I bring both parties together. Um, and, you know, especially with kids, you know, what I try to do is make sure that I'm listening to both sides of the story, number one. And I know in between there, they're in, in the middle somewhere, there's the truth. So ultimately, once I get to that point, um, what I do is I, the kids who are having the problem, what I do is I, I make them look themselves in the eye, each other in the eye and apologize and I have them shake hands. Um, and to me, that's something that, again, when you're listening to the problem, you quickly have to figure out what, where, where the truth is. But to me, I just think sometimes, you know, the apology is the thing that, that people want the most uh, because, you know, it's act and react. So, you know, when, when you have those type of situations, um, I make sure that the kids look each other in the eye because to me, it's important to make sure that you have that eye contact. Because mm -hmm. one thing that I notice about younger kids, they have a problem looking people into the eye. So I make them look each other into the eye. And I, and I these I, things right here. <laughs> I make them say, I'm sorry. And if I'm not satisfied with that, what I'll do is I'll sit them off on the side a little bit and I let them think about it a little bit. And then I, I, I bring them back and, uh, and I'm like, okay, well, are you guys ready to be sincere with your apologies? And most of the time they are once they sat down for about 10 minutes. And then you can honestly see the sincerity in, in, into their apologies. And, and then that, that helps me resolve any conflict that I have. And I, and I, I kind of do the same thing with the parents. Um, the first thing I, I go into it is I say, hey, I apologize if, if, if we cause you any pain or anything like that. And then that brings, that brings down the level of emotion. And then we can have a conversation. So um, those, those, those kind of methods are the, the methods I use to resolve my issues when it comes to conflict with parents and not only parents, but with, with, with kids alike. You know, it's funny, Troy, I read this book. Um, oh man, what's the name of the book? Uh, I think it's called Never Split the Distance by Chris Boss. And he actually talks about that. He actually talks about all the things that you just talked about. You know, great advice. <laughs> um, you know, Troy, you know, you're a very confident person. You know, the one thing I know about you, like you, regardless of what's going on in your life, you always seem to exude like, like power and confidence. Um, what, what advice can you give our high school and middle school students on how to stay confident in yourself? I think you have to have supreme belief in what you're doing. You have to have supreme belief and confidence and conviction in what you're doing. And I think when you have that, 
um, that, that, that confidence comes out. I, I know for me, um, there were times in my career where I doubted, I doubted myself and I had to push that reset button. But I said, no matter what happens, I'm going to give it whatever situation I'm in, I'm going to give it 100%. Because at the end of the day, I have to be able to look myself in the mirror and know that I, if I gave 100% or I didn't give 100%. So to me, I think you have to have supreme confidence in what you do. You, 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 have to, you have to continue to know that you're doing the right things, whatever direction that you're going. And I think that helps in your confidence. And, and, and also surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Because I think when, you, when you're around like-minded people, they encourage you to always do the right things and, and those things. We all have friends where we've been around those friends and those friends are so negative, they kind of they make you doubt yourself or they make you doubt your confidence. So you have to get yourself around like-minded people. And, and what you'll find is that your confidence will grow. Your confidence will grow when you're around those like-minded people. Hmm, that's good. Uh, Ms. Valeria Mastery. So I think I'm going to reiterate everything Troy said because that's just, it's just on point um, in order to make, yeah, it really is. There's nothing else I can really say to that except just, you know, it's, it's so true. Believing in yourself is the first step to maintaining your confidence to know that. And for me, I'm going to take it one step and just say, you know, if you're faced with something that is causing you doubt, self doubt, and you're saying, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm smart enough. I'm worthy enough. Know that as long as your brain is still working, you still have your blood flow, you still have thought, you are able to learn and you are able to grow and you are able to accomplish whatever that task is that's making you doubt yourself. Um, so that has always been something, you know, that, that I've used to help my confidence is, you know, even if I don't know it right now, I'm still able to learn. You know, whether I learn slowly or quickly, I can take it a step at a time, but I can accomplish it and I can work towards a goal because my brain is still working. Thankfully, you know, I still have life um, and I still have a working brain. Sometimes it's slow. Sometimes it's tired. Sometimes <laughs> it's stressed out, but it's still operating. And I need to be cognizant, cognizant of that and say, you know, as long as my brain is working, I can learn something. And when doubt starts to come my way, I remind myself of that. You know what? I may not know it right now, but I can learn and I can move forward. And that helps my confidence. Yeah, you're, you're 100% correct. Um, I think the one thing that helps me, be, helps me be, um, stay confident, it's probably two things. Um, number one, trying new things um, allows me to stay confident because then, you know, I go into a saying, <clears throat> if I try this and I get it, man, imagine what I can do, you know, if I do something else. So trying new things kind of helps me stay confident because I, I realize that I have skill sets that I never knew that I had before. And this is, this is recent. I, I can't say when I was a young person, <clears throat> I tried a lot of new things and I wish I would have because I'm realizing like I have all these gifts that I could have been using when I was much younger. So I think trying new thing, things and then realizing that you're, you're more talented in so many more areas than you, um, than you think. Um, and then two, um, uh, man, I forgot. It. <laughs> that's, that's what happens to you where you go. Know. Um, oh, I, so, but the most, the, the, the way I stay confident um, most times is being prepared. Uh, you know, when I have, done everything that I can do and I've studied and I've learned and I've challenged myself and I've put myself in the best position that Tuan Russell can be in, I feel the most confident I can be. And I think a prepared person is a confident person. Um, and, and I laugh all the time because I, I tell young people when I talk to them, well, I, when I talk to you, I, I, I say, you know, for you, it may take you 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour to study something and learn it. It may take me a day, it may take me six hours, it, it may take me a month, but at the end of it, my goal is to know it so well that when it's time to use it, I can walk into it and feel very confident 
um, that I know it. And we all learn differently. And I think we have to stop measuring ourselves to other people. When I stop measuring myself to somebody else, that's when my life starts to progress. And it started, it actually, it actually happened in football because, and Troy Drayton can speak to this too. Like we get measured every single day. Like from the time you, from the time that you show up, you're on camera. And from when you leave, you're on camera, they analyze the way you speak, the way you play every single thing. So I start. Started, I started measuring myself against other people and it started to bog me down. And then I said, you know what? All I can do, all I can control is, mm-hmm. is what I can control. So I just start studying and learning and doing the things that I can control, doing the best that I can do. And I saw my career starting to transform because my stress level went down. I knew even when I failed, I said, you know what? I might have failed, but I gave my best. I can walk off that football field. I can walk off that practice field and know that I prepared the best way I know, and and I can I can feel good about myself. And I think when you prepare yourself and you go go to try to accomplish something, you can be confident because you've done everything that you can do. Um, question six, uh, Miss Valer uh, Montreal, uh, this one's for you. Are you are you doing any mental wellness exercises to stay sharp, like reading books or uh, maybe talking to family about you know current events? Or even do you have a, maybe a mentorship relationship with a friend that helps you? What, what do you do to stay, um, stay mentally well? Um, yeah. So two things. Uh, Troy mentioned this before is reaching out to a, a friend, um, reaching out to a positive peer. So I have um, a group of colleagues, and we say all the time the power of the group chat mm. um, because we just have a safe space, and we call it a safe space. And we all know that this is a safe space. So we'll come to the group chat and we'll say, you know, guys, I have, is this, we'll check in first and we'll say, is this a safe space right now? Because first of all, you need to make sure that everyone else is ready to give you that support, right? That you need at that moment. Um, and so we wait for one another to say, yes, go ahead, spill it. What, what's going on? Um, and, then, and then you vent. You vent and you right. say, okay, this is what's going on right now. This is what's stressing me out or this is what's making me angry or this is what I'm sad about. And you have that um, place that safe space with people who agree it's a safe space and are ready to hear you out to just lay your heart out and say, you know, this is what's troubling me. Um, This is what's affecting my mental health right now. You know, so one of my colleagues, you know, who says, you know, I'm 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 on the brink of an anxiety attack right now and I just need, you know, and so we'll all pitch in, okay, go outside, take a walk, take deep breaths, you know, stuff like that. Or someone who says, you know, I just had a fight with my boyfriend and then, you know, we'll pitch in or someone who says, you know, uh, work is really stressing me out. And then everyone, you know, dives in on support and, and help. Um, and so that helps my mental health a lot, knowing that I have a place to go to with, like Troy said, positive peers, yeah. people who, who have good things to say and to contribute, people who are like-minded and not people who are negative or who don't understand the need for, for support, for social support, you know? So you want to make sure you identify those good people in your life. Sometimes it's friends, sometimes it's adults. Um, a lot of the time teens forget that there are adults out there in your life that you can reach out to that are willing to give you that time and that space. Sometimes we think they're the enemy, you know, when we're in that, you know, like the adults are the enemies yeah. and they'll never understand. But as a teen, it's important to identify, you know, it might not even be in your family. You might have to go outside of your family to find that positive, consistent, reliable adult um, to say, okay, this is the person that I can rely upon when I'm in that moment of, of, you know, like a mental crisis, just when my head's not right and I need someone to talk to, um, be able to identify those people ahead of time so that when you get to that point where you need that support, you know exactly who to go to and where to get that help. Um, And the second thing is nature. Um, I'm very big on letting the wind hit your face getting out there, you know, trees give off a lot of good oxygen that we need in our lungs. Yes, you know, things that that AC can't really give us, you know, but you need to get out there, you need to let the sun hit your face, let the wind hit your skin, and you need to breathe deeply, breathe deeply, Mm -hmm. calm your mind down, and get get in a a place of nature to, you know, get, get, get right, balance out your emotions and all the hormones running through your body. Man, you can teach a class. Thank you. <laughs> you can teach a class. That was awesome. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm telling you, I've been taking notes. Don't be surprised. Y'all see me over there, you know, in the sun. 
to um, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find a windy day, though. There's not very many windy days here in South Florida, except for the last couple of days. It's been yeah. raining ridiculous. I have a flood outside my house. Mm -hmm. Oh, Troy Drayton. What's the question again, Twan? So, what, what are, um, <laughs> I, I was going to read that. I'm glad you said that. Um, um, are you doing any mental wellness uh, exercises to stay sharp? So, um, one of the things that I do every morning, like that's the first thing I do when I, when I wake up, is I read. I, I read every morning. Like, that's the first thing that I do. My iPad is next to my bed, so I, I go and I read the newspaper. And, and then, I, you know, I, I just read the things that I enjoy reading, sports and, and different things like that. So um, I, I do read a lot. Um, but like Amelia said, uh, what I've started doing during this pandemic is uh, I walk every other day. And I walk for, for, for time. And, and, and what that does is it relieves all of my stress, but it also gives me a chance to categorize things in my head. So if I'm walking and I'm thinking about work, now I'm starting to put together those pieces that I need to put together so that when I do get back in the house and I'm showered and I'm, and I'm kind of back down to that normal level, then already I've done, I, I've done the work during my walk and now it's i just have to physically put it on paper so for me like you like you said amelia i think the the exercise and, and getting outside and doing those things are important i know one thing that i haven't done a lot of and that i need to start getting back into i enjoy golf i i, I love it um so i need to get back out there and, and and start hitting hitting some some golf balls a little bit more i think that 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 helps me as well but I think the, the, the reading and the, the exercise definitely helps, helps me in, 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 in every way. Yeah, I'll tell you, um, you have to have something. Like I exercise, um, you know, I have breathing techniques that I, I use to just help myself stay present. Uh, I think sometimes you get so distracted and sometimes you know, I, I literally, it's, it's funny when uh, Amelia was talking, I take, the, I take a deep breath and then I let it out really slow. So I count to five. When I let it out, I count to five. I let it out slow. And at the fifth, whatever's left, I push it out. And I do that four or five times and I focus on the actual breath and it actually relaxes me. It calms me. And it allows me to be present. Like even, even before I speak sometimes, I know Troy will see me just kind of disappear. And that's me being present. That's just me trying to find a way to be present in the moment. Uh, so I exercise and then I do a lot of reading. Um, you know, it's so much in this world you can learn. Like I'm reading a book, um, uh, a Belichick book right now. Um, I actually, I, I, I'm not a big Belichick fan, but I love the way he um, coaches and a guy by the name of uh, Ian Connor O'Connor uh, wrote it, and the one thing that I learned from him that's how, that's allowed me to have some mental wellness is that, man, his life was very similar to mine. Like when you think about his upbringing and just to learn about the process of how he got to where he is, I'm like, man, I started very similarly, and it allows me to realize, you know what, man, I'm I'm you know whatever fears or whatever challenges I might be putting on myself, I'm like this person started similar to me or have similar situation if he can do it so can i so it, it just kind of helps my mind stay healthy uh, we have one more question um in question number seven and this one is i'm a big routine guy and it's like do you have a set routine i do i i'm a very rigid person if i could i would wear the same pants every single day like i love jeans i would love i wear jeans and a polo shirt or a t-shirt every single day like that's kind of my deal um but yeah, I have a routine. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do, I do a devotional. Um, I read, and and then I, you know, I, I try to go find my kids and do the the kissy huggy breakfast thing, and that's before I do anything else. And then I I go to you know 2.0, you know, and then I I'll do the rest of my day. But my I, I have this routine, and what it does, it helps me stay on track. Um, there's a book called Atomic Habits, and it talked about 
you know, stacking your habits. So having a habit every single morning when you wake up and say, okay, uh, when you wake up and get coffee and you read a book, when you go get coffee, your body says, hey, you got to read too. Or, <clears throat> or when you read, it says get coffee. So it works positively and negatively. So I try to find routines that, that positively allow me to accomplish the goal that I was created to accomplish. And I, and I stack them on top of each other throughout the day. And that eventually allows me to accomplish all the things I want to accomplish. So, uh, Amelia, what about you? Do you have routines? So, um, it's interesting that you asked that because I, I'm not a very rigid routine person. Um, I think that when I have attempted in the past to be a rigid, structured person, it's actually caused me a little bit more stress. But that's mm -hmm. just because we're all individuals and you know I have an older sister who is very structured and routine and she's always called me you know the flower child she's <laughs> always called me you know mother nature because she says you know you you flow with the winds and that's that's when I'm happiest honestly is when when I'm not tied to structure and and mm -hmm. schedule and everything but I do understand that there it is very very necessary so yes there are work routines um you know checking the, I always do like a day before. So the day before I go over my schedule for work, make sure I'm prepared for all the things on my to-do list and on my, my calendar. Um, and so that's like a routine that I've initiated for work. For my personal life, for my family life, one of my routines is making sure that I connect with my children, that there is a point in the day where I get down to their level because they're little. Um, and I make sure, you know, I put everything away and focus on them and we play. We play together because that is important for their health, their mental health, um, and it's important for me to to have that moment where I connect with my children um, and um, and my husband. And so those are kind of like work life routines and then personal life routines that I do abide by. Um, but the way that God made me <laughs> is 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 kind of more um, flowy with the wind. So I do respond better to when I can just be, you know, yeah. and just float. So, yeah. yeah. So what about you, Troy? Uh, for me, I am a, I've been in sports pretty much my whole life. So um, structure is something that I need to keep me on track. And um, I, I find that, you know, when I don't have that structure, um, I just kind of, I kind of procrastinate a little bit. And um, so for me to, to have deadlines, to have all of these things where I know I have to get something done, I work best in those situations. And I'll kind of give you an example. Like um, when I went back and finished my, my undergrad online, um, I had a six month class. I had six months to complete a class. I didn't do very well. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did was about about two or three months in, I dropped the class and I retook it and I retook an eight week class and I excelled. And it was because of the structure, because I knew I had something to do every single week. I knew that and I got into that routine. Um, my routine pretty much is, is pretty much the same. I, I, like you say, Twan, I, I, I wake up and, and, I, and, I, and I read a devotional. Um, and then, you know, I just kind of meal around the house a little bit. And, uh, a lot of times, uh, because of the, being in the pandemic, uh, I've been walking a lot. I feel at a certain time in the morning, my body is saying, okay, get up. We got to get you up and out, but we need to get you out of bed. And I feel my body pushing me out of bed. Um, and, and what I've tried to do is I tried to to get out of that routine and, and, and do something a little bit different. So now I kind of walk in the evenings because when you're doing something over and over again, your body gets used to it. It, it now is, is, is not doing what you want your body to do. It just kind of leveled off. So I changed up my routine a little bit and that way I can, I can make those gains. Um, so, you know, those are the type of things that I, I do, but I'm a very structured person. I need that structure um, because it, it, it helps me focus on, on the task at hand. And it also gives me a start date and an end date. So when I have that structure, I feel like I thrive in that structure because, um, you know, I've, I grew up in a structured house. Uh, my, my college head coach was a very structured person. 
And, um, you know, all through the NFL, your life is structured around practice and playing. So uh, that was the perfect thing for me. You know, I'll tell you, that, that, that's great. I mean, we all attack it in different ways, and I think it's good for um, the, the young people listening to be able to hear that. Now, I'm, I'm sure you guys are tired of us <laughs> answering all the questions. You're probably saying, like, man, you know, maybe I, I can answer some of these questions. So we're going we're gonna to switch gears a little bit. Now, I think it's only fair that uh, you get a chance to answer some questions. In a moment, uh, you will see – some poll questions pop up on your screen to answer. All we ask is you answer them. But before we do that, I'm going to, you know, I, I told you I want to get to 700 on, on my Instagram account and I'm at uh, 649. So, you know, if you haven't done it, go ahead and like us on Instagram at Junior Dolphins. Uh, Junior spelled out Junior Dolphins. <clears throat> it helps me keep my job. I really appreciate it. So please keep, keep signing up. We have a couple more minutes before we finish. Um, but I hope you guys are ready. Everybody ready to go? So we're going we're gonna to switch gears. Um, here we go with question number one. Uh, question number one. All right, let's see here. We have advertisements don't always portray people in a realistic, in realistic ways. Is this a true statement or is this a false statement? So basically, do advertisements always portray people in realistic ways? Is it true or is it false for you? So we're looking for you to answer that. Um, you know, go ahead and let us know. The advertisements don't always portray people in realistic ways. So you can answer that. Is that a true statement or is that a false statement? I don't know. Um, let's see here. Do we get the results here, uh, Darian? There we go. Yeah, we've got the results. Ah, 93% of the people say that, um, Advertisements don't always portray people in a realistic way. That's true. It does not always portray us in a realistic way. That, I, I've always thought that sometimes when you're watching TV, um, you see people's lives on television or on social media, and you think, man, they have such a great life, man. They got the same problems we got. They just <laughs> don't need their best, they best self in that moment. Yeah. All right, let's go to the second question. Um, peer influences are always positive. So the question is, are peer influences always positive? Peer influences, are they always positive? Now peer, just for some of the middle school students who may not have heard that word peer, peer means that um, probably um, people that are the same age or similar environment. So a peer, a peer is like your classmate or someone that you connect with. Ah, false. Peer influences are always positive. That's you're 100% correct. Um, they're not always positive. Sometimes, um, you know, you have some peer influences that you shouldn't listen to. Um, you know, I had a my I had a pastor once tell me, you "Eat the meat and spit out the bones," meaning that you take the good from people and know that sometimes they may have some negative influences, and you got to understand and see that, and you have to make sure you realize it and reject it. So, question number three. Question number three is, uh, it is impossible to become addicted to using social media. Is it impossible to become addicted to using social media? Hmm. <laughs> they, should get this one. they should get this right. <laughs> <laughs> is it, it is possible to become addicted to social media. Yeah. Oh, false. <laughs> I thought it would be 100%. I'm going to tell you right now, it is, what I, I believe, man, I remember when TikTok, I'm not even a TikTok fan. I literally, I've never used TikTok until about, until the pandemic hit. Troy, I had to, I had to take the app off my phone. I was addicted. I, 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 I was coming to the phone like I was hungry. Like, I had to come. <laughs> um, let's see, question number four. Uh, your view, your view of the world is shaped by your friends, family, teachers, classmates, pop culture, and more. So I can see this going both ways. I can see this question going both ways. Um, you know, is your view of the world shaped by your friends, family, teachers, classmates, pop culture, and more? True. Mm. Yeah, I, I would say true as well. I think... Yeah. 
I think your eyes and your ears are a gateway to your heart. So the, the environment that you place yourself in and the things that you listen to and watch really dictate who you become. And that's just my personal opinion. Um, and last but not least, uh, the last question, select all the following that, pro that provide an example for staying mentally, physically healthy, mentally and physically healthy. And now this is multiple choice, so you can, um, you can click several of them. Uh, let's see what we do here, let's see what we have. It'd be interesting to see, let's see, 14% um, said um, lifting weights, 23% say uh, uh, going for a walk, 20% um, say reading a book, and then 89% say all of the above. Now that doesn't, that adds up more than 100%. <laughs> but yes, I 100% I agree. And we kind of talked uh, about that a little bit earlier. So in, in closing, um, I, I want to see uh, uh, if you have any closing marks. Um, uh, Ms. Valer, uh, Monsieur, do you have any closing remarks for our high school and middle school students? Um, you got about you got about thirty to forty seconds. Yes, definitely. Um, my closing remarks is always keep character in the forefront of your mind, and make sure that every decision that you make is done in good character, good moral character. Um, and trust me, when you get old and gray. You'll have less regrets about life if you always make sure that you present um, your best self um, as far as your character <clears throat> in everything that you do. Troy? Um, I would say always put your best foot forward. Um, no matter what you do in life, put your best foot forward um, and always think about doing the right thing. Like every choice that you make is going to dictate the outcome of, of your life. I've learned, I've heard, I've heard a, a very wise man say that all the time. And this wise man is on this, uh, this call, but the choices that you make will dictate the outcomes of, of, of your life. And, you know, we want you guys to make those positive choices. And if you can't, um, and if you feel like you need help, making those choices, go to, your, go to your positive friends, those friends who will listen to you and help you through those situations. Um, and, and be open to change. Be open to change because, again, you know, this pandemic has taught us a lot. And uh, we, we've constantly had to change the way that we do business, the way that we do things. Um, and you have, to be able, you have to be open and be able to embrace change as well. Well, that ends our time together today. And thank you all so much for spending time with us. I encourage you to take this less, these lessons you've learned from Character Playbook course and from the conversations today and apply them to your own life with your friends. I wanted to highlight, um, this is the third year of ca Character Change and, is, and Character Change is now live. This year's theme is character in the community and ask, and, and the ask is to, um, to all of you, share how you are um, overcoming challenges in the past, uh, how, share how you have overcome challenges in the past few months. More information can be found at characterplaybook.com. And before I close out, I do want to close with this one little point. Um, as um, Troy was talking, I was thinking, um, you know, character takes people. You need a a good group of people around you. And it reminds me of this um, African warrior who had three sons who uh, he was teaching how to shoot a bow. And he gave each one of his sons a bow. And he says, uh, his oldest son, hey, take the bow and break it over your knee. His son took it, broke it over his knee and was very excited because he broke it very easily. The second son did the same. The last, the youngest son did the same. Then he, then he took three more bows from his quiver and he gave it to his older son and said, son, break it. And his son tried to break it. He's like, man, I can't break this. He gave it to his second son. The son said, man, I can't break it either. And the younger son tried and he's like, I can't break it. And the warrior, the, the father of the three boys, the African warrior said, boys, 
things in life are going to happen to you and you're going to need one another to overcome them. And you need each other to make sure your character is strong. You got to hold each other accountable and you can't do that by yourself. You have to do it as a group because three arrows are so much stronger than one. And I would challenge everyone who's here today, understand that you need people around you in order to live a character filled moral life. You need to have other people around you to help you stay accountable, to help you stay connected. And sometimes just to tell you the truth. And if you have those people around you, you cannot be broken, similar to those three arrows. So I'm going to close on behalf of the Miami Dolphins and United Way of Broward County, your teachers and parents. Thank you so much for joining us today and talking about character, healthy relationships, and mental wellness. It was great to meet you. Have a great week. Stay safe and go Dolphins.